Hello, I'm Christina with The Turned Leg. I love to salvage, repurpose, and create and help others to do the same. I also have never thought of myself as a canvas artist until now. Have you ever had that one thing you never thought you could do? Over the years, as a painter, I've learned, I think, that confidence is what leads to success. I think if you can really believe you can do it, then you can. There's been a lot of pieces of furniture that I've gotten and I'm like, I think I'm gonna paint this one pink. I had a dresser where I had this idea in my head. I'd never done the finish before. I grabbed my paintbrush and did it and was successful. I didn't let the doubt creep in. Every time I experience that, I just kind of have a gut feeling that it's gonna turn out. Now this didn't happen instantly and it's taken some time to develop, but whenever I feel that, I try to follow through. And this jack-o'-lantern project was one of those. My mom, who is paint and porcelain, you can follow her on Facebook and YouTube and all of the places. I will link her in the description box below. I'll also put a link to one of her videos up above. She teaches people how to paint porcelain. And recently she was showing off this jack-o'-lantern piece. She was teaching a study from Randy Ouellette in her painting group. The minute I saw that jack-o'-lantern, I said, I think I can paint that. In fact, I really want to. I have never painted my own canvas piece. I was in a class one time where I followed along and I painted some flowers and they were okay. <laughs> but this time I really felt in my gut that I wanted to paint it, so I did. I was so happy with how it turned out. I want to show you how to paint it. It's really that simple. And I hope if you have any doubt that you can do it, You'll watch this video and go, oh, I can totally do it. Trust me, if I can paint this, so can you. For this project, you will need a canvas. Any size will work. You could even paint this on a board of wood, but it might be a good idea to prime it white before you start. A list of all the materials I use can be found in the description box below. I also will be using DIY paint for this project. DIY paint is the best paint for blending. It's also all natural and water-based, and it comes in a wide variety of colors. The first step is to create your palette, and I'm just using a paper plate. If you're using the sample containers, just take some of the paint out of the sample containers. The best way I have found to store my paint is using the FIFO bottles, first in, first out bottles. The squeeze bottles are much easier and I carry them on my website. The colors you see so far are Summer Crush, the orange, the Queen Bee yellow, and this is Gypsy Green, which is an olivey green color. I'm also using Little Black Dress, which is a true black, and Fire Starter, a nice bright orange, and Marquee, which is a pretty red. Once you have your palette all set, you can get to painting. For this project, I am using my short stop brush from the Turquoise Iris, and the very first step is I'm using Queen Bee, the yellow, to create a circle on my canvas. If you want, you can use a pencil to draw out a circle and then just fill it in with paint. As I'm painting, I'm rotating my brush side to side to create a cross hatch pattern. It just adds a little bit of texture. To purchase any of the products that you're seeing me use here today, you can shop my online store at shoptheturnedleg.com or if you're local, you can shop my booth at Plaza Antiques and Collectibles Mall in Lincoln Park, Michigan. The next step is to use your orange summer crush. Use the same brush and don't worry if your yellow paint is not dry. You want to actually be able to do some blending and it helps if it's still a little damp. Start filling in the area around the circle 
using the same crosshatch technique with your summer crush. For the next step, I have changed my brush to the Turquoise Iris Boss Brush. I am now applying Marquee all the way around the edge where the Summer Crush and the Queen Bee meet in the circle. Are you enjoying this video? If so, please click the like button and subscribe to my channel. Also, click the bell for notifications every time I upload a new video. It really helps me to grow my channel to help others to salvage, repurpose, and create. Now for blending, we need a little bit of water. To achieve this, I am using my Water Girl Fine Mist Sprayer and spraying right on my brush to waken up the colors and make them easier to blend. DIY paint is really easy to blend when you add a little water. I'm using the same short stop brush and I am just blending the colors in and I'm applying a little bit more Summer Crush as I work. I'm also taking a moment here to make sure the edges of my canvas are covered. This is something you can always go back and do, but if you can do it while you're working, if you remember, it's a good idea because the paint colors will be more true. I'm using my Boss brush and I'm loading it with Gypsy Green and Little Black Dress. Dip your paintbrush in both. And now I'm just kind of brushing it on, not in straight strokes, I'm making a little bit of texture. When you get close to the edges of the yellow circle, you want to bring the green up a little bit on either side. As you're dipping your brush in the colors, if one area is darker than you want, just put a little bit more green on your brush to balance it out. Don't forget to get the edges of your canvas with the green color too. DIY paint will lighten as it dries. I just wanted to show it to you with a demonstration. Don't worry if your colors get lighter. They will darken up when you seal your painting. Now to make your jack-o'-lantern. You can create your jack-o'-lantern however you want, but make sure to position it over the yellow circle. I traced everything with a pencil, so then it was more like a coloring book and I was able to fill it in. This gave me a lot of extra confidence too that it would turn out the way I wanted it to. I'm adding these bumps onto the circle of my pumpkin just to make it look more like a real pumpkin and then I'm drawing the stalk. To make the mouth, I first outlined a general mouth design and then I filled it in with the jagged details that I wanted. I'm not really good at making it look random and so I wanted to take some extra time to draw this out ahead of time. Don't worry about all the pencil marks, you'll be able to cover them with paint as you go. Now for the fun part. I have a whole bunch of detail brushes that I'm using to do this, but I'm pretty much just filling it in using Little Black Dress. It's kind of like a big coloring book. First thing you want to do is outline the pumpkin.
and then outline his face. Then make sure the outline is completely dry before the next step. You don't want any blending of colors. Remember, don't worry if you can see pencil marks, you're going to cover that with paint. Now it's time to add a little bit of color to the openings in the jack-o'-lantern. And I referred to the inspiration piece for the general colors, and then I kind of also did my own thing too. I used Summer Crush, which is the orange, the Gypsy Green, and I also used Queen Bee in a few spots to cover up some of the pencil marks. Now I cleaned up my black outline around any spot that I went over. Next, I filled in my jack-o'-lantern all black. For the next step, unfortunately, the video did not record. So I'm gonna show you what I did. I used a stencil brush, Marquee from DIY Paint, and Firestarter. The area right underneath the pumpkin, I wanted to kind of glow. So I stippled using both colors on my stencil brush. This is fire starter. You don't want very much paint on your brush. It's kind of like as if you were stenciling. Both colors are on and I stippled the area right underneath the jack-o'-lantern. The next step was to grab my boss brush again and some little black dress and gypsy green. I am adding more height to the areas on either side of the jack-o'-lantern. And you'll notice I'm putting more black than gypsy green. I'm also bringing those colors in over the newly painted area. I grabbed my short stop brush without any new paint on it since the whole area was wet and just kind of stippled my brush all over. This distributed some of the black paint and green paint onto the glowy area but did not cover it entirely. Now it was time to put the grass and the weeds in behind the jack-o'-lantern. I used the inspiration as a guide, and I also kind of did my own thing. I do have to thank Connie, the painted photographer. I watched a video of hers on how to do curly cues, and she really helped me with some brush techniques. I will put her information in the description box below. She has a lot of painting videos. Her tip for making anything curly is you load up your brush with paint, and then you slowly lift it up while you're pulling it, 
and that will cause it to curl. I did that on the edges of a lot of the grass, but first I just drew them in place and then I added the curls and the details. Next, it was time to add the leaves and the foliage. This was the hardest part for me. I looked at the inspiration piece and it looked like a lot of the foliage was the letter C upside down and there were also lots of triangles. So I just kind of played around with it and found out what worked well for me. A lot of the leaves kind of reminded me of tulip leaves. Play around with what will work best for you. Next I dried it a little bit and I looked for any little touch-ups that I needed. Allow your piece to dry for 24 hours before sealing it. DIY paint must be sealed. I use DIY paint Big Top to seal in the colors. All I do is pour a little bit into another cup and then paint over my entire piece with a nice flat brush. Make sure to smooth any of the strokes. You want it to have a really nice finished look. You will notice when you're applying a top coat, it does really darken the colors. You might be kind of grossed out by how it looks, but I promise you once it dries, it will smooth out and just be beautiful. I'm finished with my jack-o'-lantern project and I love how it turned out and I'm keeping this one and I will be hanging it in my house every Halloween to celebrate. Remember, if you think you can do it, you can. You just have to have that confidence. I hope you try this project and let me know how it turns out. Now, get out there to salvage, repurpose, and create.